Hello everyone, welcome to Current Affair MCQ's program. Let's begin with previous day's practice question. Question was, consider the following statements regarding typhoons. One, a typhoon forms over warm ocean waters near the equator and has wind speeds of at least 119 km per hour. Two, in the northern hemisphere, air circulates clockwise around the low pressure area during a typhoon. Which of the above statements is or are correct? One only, two only, both one and two or neither one or two. The correct answer is option A, one only. Typhoons form over warm ocean waters and have wind speeds of 119 km per hour or higher. Hence, statement one is correct. In the northern hemisphere, the air circulates anti-clockwise around a low pressure area during a typhoon. Hence, statement 2 is not correct. Hence, option A is the correct answer. Now, let's begin today's episode. First question is, with reference to the Nobel Prize 2024 winners, consider the following pairs. Category and winners. 1. Literature, Hong Kong. 2. Physics, Daron Akimoglu. Simon Johnson and James A. Robinson, 3. Chemistry, John J. Hopfield and Geoffrey E. Hinton, 4. Economics, David Baker, Demis Hassabis and John M. Jumper. Which of the above mentioned pairs is or are not correctly matched? 1 and 2 only, 1, 2 and 3 only, 2, 3 and 4 only or 1, 2, 3 and 4? The correct answer is option C, 2, 3 and 4 only. That is, only first pair is correct. Nobel Prize 2024 Literature South Korean author Han Kang Hence, pair 1 is correctly matched. Physics John J. Hopfield and Geoffrey A. Hinton Hence, pair 2 is not correctly matched. Physiology or Medicine Victor M. Ross and Gary Rufkun Chemistry David Baker, Demis Hassabis and John M. Jumper Hence, pair 3 is not correctly matched and economics, Daron Akimoglu, Simon Johnson, and James A. Robinson. Hence, pair 4 is not correctly matched. Hence, option C is the correct answer. Next question, which of the following statements is correct about the Haber-Bosch process? It synthesizes nitrous oxide by combining nitrogen and oxygen from the air. It is an industrial method for synthesizing hydrogen for fertilizer production. It combines nitrogen from the air with hydrogen to synthesize ammonia or it is an industrial method for the production of synthetic rubber. The correct answer is option C. It combines nitrogen from the air with hydrogen to synthesize ammonia. The Haber-Bosch process is an industrial method for synthesizing ammonia by combining nitrogen from the air with hydrogen significantly contributing to fertilizer production applications manufacturing as a refrigerant in industrial refrigeration systems and air conditioning household an ingredient in household cleaning products including glass and surface cleaners automotive fuel an internal combustion engine powered by ammonia is being explored as an alternative propulsion technology hence option c is the correct answer Next question regarding the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, consider the following statements. 1. Belarus was one of its founding members. 2. Its secretariat is based in Shanghai, China. 3. Both India and China are part of the SCO's regional anti-terrorist structure. How many of the above statements is or are correct? Only one, only two, all three or none? The correct answer is option A, only one. SCO is a permanent intergovernmental international organization founded on 15th June 2001 in Shanghai, China. It was established by six founding countries, namely Kazakhstan, China, Kyrgyzstan, Russia, Tajikistan, and Uzbekistan, evolving from the Shanghai Five mechanism. Hence, statement one is not correct. SCO has 10 full members, namely China, Russia, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, Uzbekistan. India, Pakistan, Iran, and Belarus. The SCO has two permanent bodies. The Secretariat is located in Beijing, responsible for the organization's day-to-day -day operations. Hence, statement 2 is not correct. And the Executive Committee of the Regional Anti-Terrorist Structure in Tashkent, which focuses on regional security and counter-terrorism efforts, 
both india and pakistan are part of the seo's regional anti terrorist structure which aims to promote cooperation on combating terrorism separatism and extremism and statement 3 is correct hence option a is the correct answer next question with reference to the international energy agency consider the following statements one it was created by member countries of the organization for economic cooperation and development in response to the major oil crisis of 1973 to 1974 to a candidate country to the iea does not need to be a member country of the oecd three the india energy outlook report is one of the major publications of the iea how many of the above statements is or are correct only one only two all three or none the correct answer is option b only two The International Energy Agency was created in 1974 by member countries of the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development to help industrialized countries respond to the major 1973 to 1974 oil crisis. Hence statement 1 is correct. The IEA has four main areas of focus: energy security, economic development, environmental awareness and engagement worldwide. The IEA family is made up of 31 member countries, 13 association countries including India and 4 accession countries. A candidate country to the IEA must be a member country of the OECD. Hence statement 2 is not correct. Major publications are World Energy Outlook Reports, India Energy Outlook Report, World Energy Investment Report, the IEA Technology Roadmap and Policy Pathway Series. the annual energy efficiency market report and the energy technology perspectives hence statement 3 is correct hence option b is the correct answer next question consider the following statement about the migratory birds mentioned in the context of indian wetlands once siberian cranes are found predominantly in east asia and are classified as critically endangered two flamingos are known for their vibrant pink feathers and the iucn status of the lesser flamingo is near threatened Three great white pelicans are classified as endangered and have distinctive pink skin patches around their eyes. Which of the statements given above is or are correct? One and two only, two only, one and three only, or one, two and three? The correct answer is option A. One and two only. Siberian cranes are primarily found in East Asia and classified as critically endangered. They are known for their migratory patterns and their population has drastically declined. due to habitat loss and hunting hence statement 1 is correct flamingos are known for their vibrant pink feathers and the iucn status of the lesser flamingo is near threatened hence statement 2 is correct great white pelicans are classified as least concern not endangered additionally male pelicans having a pink patch of skin around their eyes is accurate but this does not affect their conservation status and statement 3 is not correct hence option a is the correct answer next question with reference to third party litigation funding in india consider the following statements one the supreme court of india has allowed third party litigation funding as long as lawyers are not the ones financing the cases two tplf is expected to improve access to justice particularly for underprivileged groups by enabling them to pursue litigation without worrying about financial cost Three. One of the concerns about TPLF is that funders may have excessive control over case strategy, influencing the outcome for profit. How many of the statements given above is or are correct? Only one, only two, all three, or none? The correct answer is option C. All three. Third party litigation funding. The Supreme Court in the case Bar Council of India versus A K Balaji allowed TPLF provided lawyers do not fund the cases. Hence, statement one is correct. TPLF is seen as a way to improve access to justice for those who cannot afford litigation cost and statement 2 is correct there are concerns about funders having too much control over litigation strategy which could affect the fairness of the case and statement 3 is correct hence option c is the correct answer next question with reference to the interstate transmission system charge and loss waivers for renewable energy in india consider the following statements One, the ISTS waiver helps low RE states import power from RE rich states without transmission cost. Two, the continuation of the ISTS waiver has caused an imbalance in RE growth, with most of the capacity concentrated in a few RE rich states. 
Three, the phase out of the ISDS waiver will lead to higher transmission investments in RE rich states to meet growing energy demands. How many of the statements given above is or are correct? Only one, only two, all three or none. The correct answer is option B, only two. Interstate transmission system charge. The ISDS waiver was introduced to help low RE states meet their renewable purchase obligations by allowing them to import power from RE rich states without incurring transmission cost. Hence, statement 1 is correct. The waiver has led to an imbalance in RE growth concentrating capacity in a few RE rich states like Rajasthan, Gujarat and Tamil Nadu. Hence, statement 2 is correct. The phase out of the ISTS waiver is expected to encourage local RE generation rather than continuing high transmission investments in RE rich states. Hence, statement 3 is not correct. Hence, option B is the correct answer. Next question with reference to the sale of genetic data under the Digital Personal Data Protection Act 2023, consider the following statements. One, the Act exempts the processing of personal data during mergers or amalgamations from obtaining prior consent from data principles. Two, after the merger, the new acquirer is free to process genetic data for any purpose regardless of the privacy policy previously agreed to by the customers. Which of the above statements is or are not correct? One only, two only, both one and two or neither one nor two. The correct answer is option B, two only. Digital Personal Data Protection Act 2023. Section 17.1e exempts the processing of personal data during mergers or amalgamations from requiring prior consent from data principles. Hence, statement 1 is correct. After the merger, the acquirer can only process the data in accordance with the original privacy policy or with fresh consent from the customers. Hence, statement 2 is not correct. Hence, option B is the correct answer. Next question with reference to the Andaman and Nicobar Islands Integrated Development Corporation. Consider the following statements. 1. ANIIDCO is a quasi-government agency involved in developing and commercially exploiting natural resources in an environment-friendly manner. 2. ANIIDCO was created under the Companies Act 1956 to balance development with sustainability in the Andaman and Nicobar Islands. Which of the above statements is or are correct? One only, two only, both one and two or neither one or two. The correct answer is option C, both one and two. Andaman and Nicobar Islands Integrated Development Corporation or ANIIDCO. It is a quasi-government agency involved in developing and commercially exploiting natural resources in an environment-friendly manner. Hence, statement 1 is correct. It was created under the Companies Act 1956 to balance development with sustainability in the Andaman and Nicobar Island. Hence, statement 2 is correct. Hence, option C is the correct answer. Last question with reference to the intangible cultural heritage. Consider the following statements. 1. The 2003 UNESCO Convention on ICH shifted the focus from protecting monuments and sites to safeguarding living traditions and practices. 2. The evaluation of intangible cultural heritage elements is conducted solely by UNESCO experts without community involvement. 3. Incorporating ICH into formal and non-formal education is central to the 2003 Convention's aim of safeguarding cultural diversity. How many of the statements given above is or are correct? Only one, only two, all three or none. The correct answer is option B, only two. Intangible cultural heritage. The 2003 UNESCO Convention expanded the scope of cultural heritage to include living traditions moving beyond monuments and sites. And statement one is correct. The evaluation of ICH elements involves local communities, not just UNESCO experts. And statement two is not correct. Incorporating ICH into formal and non-formal education is central to the 2003 Convention's aim of safeguarding cultural diversity. Hence, statement 3 is correct. Hence, option B is the correct answer. Now, moving on to practice question. With reference to India's AI mission, consider the following statements. 1. The India AI mission aims to develop a robust AI computing infrastructure with high-end GPUs to support AI startups and research in various sectors. To one of the key challenges for India's AI mission is the high cost and limited availability of GPUs necessary for advanced AI applications. Which of the above statements is or are not correct? One only, two only, both one and two or neither one nor two. Send the answer of this question in the comment section. Thanks for watching. 
For more informative content, like, share and subscribe and do not forget to press the bell icon to get the notifications.